Do we look cloudy? No, I don't think so. <sighs> well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. And to my left, who is this? Well, this here's the queen of my double wide trailers. Nisha Solis hyphen Berry. Nisha <laughs> loves it. Registered nurse, health coach, soon to be lactation consultant, and also my wife. Not even begrudgingly. She willingly did that. Pregnant wife. Knocked up. Second that, yeah. time. <laughs> What a singer, Boink says. Come on, Boink. Be He's honest. He's got it. He's got it. He's got be advice. honest. Be honest. Okay, welcome, guys. Don't forget to invite your mama and Aunt B. You know they always forget. Send them a text message or a direct message. You're welcome to share this on your social media if you think it will help other people improve their health. That's why we're here, to help the whole world get healthier. Um, Chris asked about Marfan syndrome. This is a genetic condition. Uh, definitely a keto or carnivore diet, a proper human diet is going to decrease the severity of some of the symptoms and possible complications of Marfan's, but it's a genetic defect. It, you're still going to have Marfan's no matter what diet you eat. And then Julie, welcome. This is the first time Julie has got to catch us live. Welcome, Julie. Glad to have you. James is in Los Angeles having a little coffee. A. I got a little decaf with some yeah. whipped butter. Uh, if you're new, welcome. Glad to have you. We answer as many questions as we possibly can. It's impossible for us to answer all of them, but we try as best as we can. 100%. We, we try. We try. Uh, announcement, the uh, 2022 Keto Awards are now open. You can nominate whoever you think is the top educator, what's the best keto book, the keto podcast, keto researcher, I've got a link down in the show notes that you can click on and fill out your ballot. I'm not sure if you can vote like once a week or once a month or once a week or just once. I don't know. So I'll leave it to you guys to vote for who you think should win those awards. We have in our midst this evening, we have Mitzi Champion, who is a moderator. We have uh, Kevin, PhD mentor, who is a moderator. We have Paola who is a moderator. They have a little blue wrench. Not, why did YouTube decide to have a wrench? It's know. like they're changing the oil while we're live or something. I don't you understand. You think they put like a star. Right, or right. I don't, I don't know, know why you guys have a wrench, but you do. But they're going to be answering beginner questions. If they see an obvious beginner question, they're going to reach out to you in the comments and answer. So if somebody with a blue wrench by their name answers your comment, they're legit. They're trying to help you out. All right, you ready to take I'm a few? I'm ready. Let's do it. Steven, FYI, doctor at American College of Cardiac Fighting LDL Meta Analysis, sure. uh, cites large CTT collaboration meta analysis where the best graph is relative risk fail. Yeah, have yeah. Have you made a video I, about that? I have. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the video I just made. Uh, yeah. There are cardiologists who believe fervently in their heart of hearts that a plant-based diet is the healthiest diet. They believe that, that a vegan diet is a proper human diet based on no paleoanthropology, based on no uh, physiology or biochemistry. They just believe that. And it's our job to lovingly, gently, diplomatically help them understand that that's incorrect. A proper human diet includes meat and eggs, lots of meat and eggs, oysters, shellfish, all the good stuff that is on the earth that we can eat. Uh, Beach Sue, my hubby got his coronary artery calcium score and it is 552, which is high. What are your thoughts? That's very high. So what I would do is I would immediately get him on a real whole food keto diet. So uh, meat and veg. That's what keto actually is. It's not keto pies and cookies and cakes and treats and shakes and bars. All that stuff is bullshit. That's what that is. You want to eat meat and veg and, and then recheck his CAC in a year. It may be the same or it may be a little less than it is currently. Uh, Dr. Arthur Agustin, who invented the CAC score measurement, said that uh, he seldom sees people, he never sees people go back to zero once they have a high number like that, but that you can stop the progression with a proper human diet. And that, that's actually a quote from him. Lily wants to know, can carnivore help with ALS? 
it, it, it it's not going to cure it. Okay, ALS is a devastating neurological condition. I think that if you've been eating a proper human diet your entire life or for years and years, you're at much lower risk of contracting ALS. Part, ALS is partly genetic. There's no doubt about that. But it's not. A, it's, it's maybe 3% genetic. And then the other 97% are lifestyle and diet. And so I think proper human diet is going to make it less severe and also probably put off your diagnosis date by a few years or a few decades, either of which would be a great victory if you know somebody with ALS. Uh, somebody asked what color lipstick I'm wearing. Right. <laughs> I like my wind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Stop that. Um, this is from the brand Bite. Like take a bite. It's chemical free, food grade quality makeup, and I think it's called Orange Crush. Has anybody had their CAC go down on keto, ketovore, carnivore? Jr. says his CAC went down two hundred points on keto, and I've had thousands of people reach out to me and say, "Hey, my CAC score went down after a year of keto or carnivore. Is that does that happen?" I'm like, "Yeah, it happens very often." but it doesn't happen for everyone. Remember, if your CAC doesn't go up more than 10% in a year, that's a victory. Lady of Rain, I just had gastric band removed. It feels great to be able to eat more than a couple of bites. Can I just go ahead and start keto or are there rules? Yep. Every meal when you're good and hungry, you're going to eat lots of meat, a little bit of veg until you're comfortably stuffed, then stop eating. That is a proper human diet. Uh, Wendy, what are your thoughts on coconut whipping cream and coconut milk? Ingredients are only coconut and filtered water with no added sugars or additives. Yeah. So uh, you look at the carbohydrate count. Even if there's no added sugar, make sure that it's a very low carbohydrate food and make sure that you count those carbohydrates in your daily total counts. ZZZ. Uh, <clears throat> Been clean ketovore for nine months without weight loss. 35-year-old female, lots of hair loss, so maybe a thyroid problem. Mm -hmm. If so, do I have to take medication? Maybe, yeah. So go watch my YouTube video on this channel called The 13 Reasons Why Your Weight Loss Might Stall. And it, one of those is an undiagnosed low thyroid condition. One of those is an undiagnosed adrenal condition. There can be undiagnosed lots of conditions that can slow down your weight loss, your fat loss, because that's what you really want. Also, lose. make sure you're not super restricting your calories. Eat to your full. Um, eat to your full. Eat plenty of protein and plenty of fat attached to your protein. Yep, 100%. I love it. There's no such thing as bad cholesterol. HDL is the good cholesterol, and LDL is the other good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Your body uh, makes LDL. It uses LDL for hundreds of things each and every day. Caesar, how do you know if you have gallstones? You get an ultrasound or a CAT scan. That's how you know for sure if you have gallstones and also how big the gallstones are. Yeah, Millions of Americans have gallstones, and they have no idea because very often they don't hurt. The only time they ever cause pain is if they get stuck in the cystic duct. Then they cause ungodly pain. Anytime a woman tells you something is, is as painful as childbirth, as labor, that's bad. Okay. And that's one of the three things a woman has ever said that was as bad as having a baby natural was gallstones. So if they get stuck in the cystic duct, but if they're just floating around in your gallbladder, they're no danger. And you don't even need to know whether you have them or not. Autumn wants to know, what should I eat to boost fertility? Lots of meat. You want to take that one? <laughs> uh, I struggled with infertility. And depending on what your reason is, you know, you may have to take some medications as well. So make sure you go see a fertility specialist so they can, you know, pinpoint down what the problem actually is. But the answer <clears throat> is always going to be increase your fatty protein, lower those carbs, and uh, even take some supplements. There's a book called It Starts With the Egg. Highly recommend for supplements. But first step is to pin down what the cause of your infertility is because some people do need some medications like thyroid, um, sometimes metformin even. So Absolutely. More and more fertility specialists are coming around to actually recommending keto or a carnivore diet with lots of fat because they know that it's going to increase their odds of success for their clients. Oh, by the way, I meant to say, I struggled with infertility, went through IVF for my first child, who's a two-year-old little boy, <clears throat> and then, <laughs> then I just got pregnant on accident. Oh, yeah. the, the, <laughs> the wind blew. There you go. And uh, 
I almost said her name again. Baby girl will be here in July. <laughs> Julie says, will an egg yolk only break a fast in coffee? Yes, Julie. Egg yolks are actually half protein and half fat. Most people think they're all fat, but they're not. They're one-to-one -one protein to fat. They will definitely break your fast because of the protein in there. Yep. And depending on what your reasoning is for fasting, like some people could maybe get away with having a yolk in their coffee, but if you're trying to like hit hard autophagy and really, really, truly fast, then yeah, yep. it will. Yep. So, Timmy wants to know, does the doctor see re uh, remote patients? If so, how do I schedule an appointment? Not set up for this now, Timmy. We're working on this. We're actually building a new business center where we'll have space because we li literally, what's this house? 1,100 square feet? On a good day. People think we live in some kind of mansion on her YouTube channel, which is Nisha loves it, by the way. She'll do I'm like sorry, a tour and they're that. like, your house is so big. And we're like, uh, I, think it, I use the fisheye lens, which makes things look bigger than it is. Yeah, 1100 square feet. So once we've got some more space, I'm actually going to start. I, I'm still seeing a few patients in person right now. I'm going to start seeing more patients in person and start doing some remote stuff when we get that set up. It'll be limited. Limited, definitely. First yeah. come, first serve. And the, the hey, first... Man. The first people that I accept as patients are going to be Patriot, Patreons on, uh, patrons on Patreon.com. Yeah. So <laughs> link in the show notes if you want to get on the waiting list. Uh, Linda says, will beta blockers stall weight loss? 100% yes, Linda. I've got a YouTube video about all the different medications that will slow down or stall your weight loss. Teardrops and hilltops. Can you safely reduce and possibly stop meds uh, such as Remipril, Bisoprolol, and... I don't know how to pronounce that. It's a plerilone? A plerilone, yeah. After yeah. a LAD cardiac event, ejection fraction now is 47, up from initial of 35. Yeah, so your heart's healing. You absolutely can, but you're going to do it only with your doctor, right? Hand in hand with a, with a learned health partner. And you're going to let your blood pressure and your cardiac output, your heart function, those are going to be your guides as to when it's time to decrease or perhaps even stop some of these medications. But yes, it's entirely possible. Talk to your doctor about that. Thank you, Natasha Love. Hey, thank you. Vape chief. Educated my doctor today, uh, diagnosed with type two in December. My A1C was 13.2. Seven weeks of carnivore. My A1C is now 6.1. I broke my weight plateau in the last week and I'm down eight pounds in one week. Thank you both. Excellent. Congratulations. So, so vape chief's A1C went from what to what? 13. 6.1, 13.2. So still pre now pre-diabetic, but, but was severely type two. That's a, what a victory. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Lisa, 35 lean and my LDL is super low. A1C is 5.6. Uh, keto made my LDL crazy high. Mm -hmm. uh, Feldman now worried about being LMHR. How often should I check my LDL? So LMHR is lean mass hyperresponsive. Yeah, and you shouldn't be worried about that. That's probably a good thing, okay? Uh, uh, Norwitz, Feldman, and, and Dr. Tro actually published a paper about this. They're actually doing more research about this right now. My prediction turning out is that it's going to come out eventually that being a lean mass hyperresponder is actually a very healthy thing, and you definitely sound like you probably are one. <clears throat> Still working on the research behind this. Obviously. That's right, yeah. But also keep that A1C, what, keep an eye on it. It's very close to 57 Chris, uh, fueling for a keto endurance athlete. I'm doing a 10 plus mile run. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Let us know how it turns Question, out, Chris. How should he fuel? I oh, think is what he meant. You got, well, now you want to make sure you've got at least six weeks before the race so that you can become completely keto adapted. You're just going to eat as, as much uh, fatty meat and eggs as you can hold, a little veg, a few berries here and there, a few nuts here and there. That's a proper human diet. But you don't want to start a proper human diet two days before the race. You will not be keto adapted and you, your performance will suffer. But after about six to eight weeks of keto adaptation, you'll be able to run all day because you're running on fat. Laura says, I started carnivore today. Yes, Laura. Anybody else start keto or carnivore today? Or you're planning on starting it first thing in the morning? Tell me in the comments. I need an armrest too, Sorry, sir. Sorry, you Taking up more space than I normally Have I am. told you tonight, you are beautiful. Thank you. you are beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. I can really sing better than that. Really David says 61 year old insulin injection to compensate for carbs. How am I doing at two, two months, the last 18 days, not one unit of injected mealtime insulin, which would have been 900 units of injected insulin over the last 19 mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. 
You can do it too. Way to go, David. Way to go, David. Thanks for the super chat. How much money is David saving in insulin? Think about that. Any, and his health, he's yeah, saving. Any type 1 diabetic can cut their insulin usage by 80 to 90% by eating keto, keto or carnivore. Every type 2 diabetic can come completely off all insulin within three to six weeks of going keto, keto or carnivore. Hey, Paul. All right. Gwen has a very good question or statement. I heard most carnivores are carb burners because they eat high protein. I'd like to try carnivore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> that's not true. Yeah. Uh, carnivores run on fat. And if they just try to eat lean protein meat only, they don't run at all because they need fat for fuel. Andrea says, how often should we do routine blood work? I'm doing it every six months. I think if you're if you're under the age of 50 and you're very healthy and vigorous, then probably once a year is all you need, maybe twice a year. After the age of 50 or 60, especially if you have one diagnosed chronic medical problem, you need blood work every three to six months. If you're over the age of 70, 75, and you've got two or more chronic medical conditions, you may need blood work every one to three months. It just kind of depends on your health level and your age. Robert wants to know, can carnivore help slow down or even reverse diabetic retinopathy? Oh, 100%. I've got a YouTube video about diabetic retinopathy on this channel. Yeah, go check it out. All right. 100%. Life Coach says, started my 14-year-old daughter on carnivore three weeks ago. She's doing really well. Anything I should look out for? Uh, her skin. You got cut off. Yeah, her acne is going to get better. Her uh, periods are going to become more regular and consistent. Uh, she's not going to have the monthly cramping and all the having to go to bed for a day. Her mood is going to improve. Mood, yes, even a teenage girl's mood will improve. We know this from experience. Diet. That's how powerful a carnivore diet is. You can improve the mood of a teenage girl. Well, our, I guess you'd call her one of our middle daughter, daughters. She was melancholy yeah, and and yeah. just very, very moody. Down and all the she time. She started eating the way that we eat, and she was a totally different child. The teenager, totally different mm -hmm. teenager. Yep. Teenage girl. Yep. Okay. Scott <laughs> says, can you reuse the fat from cooked hamburger? You can, Scott. I would refrigerate it if it comes from uh, ground beef or minced beef uh, because it seems to go rancid a little faster than beef tallow or butter or some of the other fats. So, yes, you can reuse it, but I would refrigerate it. Thank you, the Fasting Chronicles. Uh, systems engineer for life. Type 1 diabetic, 50 days in carnivore. Had to show my endo the research you have presented in multiple videos. And Dr. Bernstein's book, Looking Up. Awesome. Beautiful, Good beautiful. Job. If any of you guys know a type 1 diabetic and you know that the, the insulin is really hurting their pocketbook, hurting their wallet, please share my type 1 videos with them so that they can understand how to cut their insulin usage by 80 to 90 percent. Uh, Brittany says, I have a history of kidney stones and have to have them surgically removed. Mm. My question is, <clears throat> they tell me to minimize my protein. Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble finding something that works for me to lose weight. Any mm -hmm. suggestions? This is your lucky day, Brittany, because I have a video on this YouTube channel about kidney stones and what actually causes them. And the diet that I recommend in the kidney stone video is also going to help you lose the unwanted fat. Boom. Was that super chat worth it? I hope it was. Spoiler, it's keto. Meat based keto. It's keto. Yeah. <laughs> but 100%, look at the research in the show notes. Maybe print it out and take it to your doctor. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Mike, what are your thoughts on niacin? Uh, while LDL doesn't matter, it seems to help HDL and triglycerides. Mm -hmm. So is there a benefit at all or is it a false increase? Love a, you guys. Excellent question, Mike. We do not know if by taking a very high dose of niacin, which can have some concerning side effects, if the lowering of triglycerides and the raising of HDL is actually protective or if that's like a false improvement. We don't know. And so what I'd rather you do is improve your triglycerides and your HDL by eating a proper human diet, because that that makes common sense that that's probably going to make you healthier if you do that. Niacin is interesting. One of the main side effects, if you take a high dose, is a severe hot flash. And so when I would give niacin in the practice to women, they would come back and be like, I had a hellacious hot flash. When the men came back, you know what they reported? I had to go to the ER. I thought I was having a heart attack. 
literally the difference between men and women. She's like, oh, it's a hot flash. The man's like, I'm done. True story. Multiple times that happened. Yeah. Jennifer, 32 years old, crone since uh, 09, been doing intermittent fasting keto since December of 21. I'm down 45 pounds. Any tips or supplements to suggest for continued weight loss and optimum health? Keep doing what you're doing, Jennifer. If your Crohn's is still bothering you a little bit, then I would highly recommend you consider 90 days of just beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, triple B&E which is going to put your Crohn's completely in remission and it's going to cut the carbohydrate intake down even more, which is going to help burn more fat. Systems engineer for life says, I have an engineer I work with that's type one. He's considering keto and possibly carnivore. I went from 180 units a day to 50 in 50 days. So he cut his insulin usage by over half, almost 75%. Yeah. More than that. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. I'm just, I'm, you guys think I'm making this up? I'm not making this up. It 100% works. Thank you, Francis. Welcome back. Um, Tony wants to know, is Ultima as good as Element? The sodium seems low. So if you have a hard time eating salt, Element and Redmond's and Keto Chow are better because they have more sodium, more salt in them, and salt is very important. However, lots of us salt our food very heavily. And so if you think you're making up the difference, then Ultima is probably fine. <clears throat> now we'll say Ultima is, or Ultima, I don't really know how it's pronounced. Super, super sweet. Super sweet. So if you're someone who is easily triggered by sweet things and it makes you want more sweet things and it's like this cycle, then that would st stay away from the Ultima. Uh, it is very good. And I think it's great for kids because it's colorful and tastes like Kool-Aid. But for adults, maybe not the best alternative, especially if you're trying to get away from sweet stuff. LJ says, how many drops of iodine do you suggest for someone with no thyroid? One to two drops of 2% Lugols each and every day. And then Magic Mia says, anything good for receding gums? Oh, my goodness, you guys. I'm working on a video about receding gums, uh, periodontal disease. Uh, swollen gums that bleed super easy. It's all about your diet. It's all about the amount of sugar in your diet and the amount of inflammatory components in your diet. Keto, real whole food keto, no cookies, cakes, and pies, just meat and veg. Your gums are going to stop receding. Now you may not regrow new gum, but they're going to stop any further recession. The You know how they bleed when you look at them, much less brush them. That's going to get better and stop. You're going to start making a good, healthy biofilm on your, your enamel again to protect you from cavities. All the good things in dental health come from eating a proper human diet. Wendy, my doctor keeps stressing out about my cholesterol because I'm on keto. He also thinks the inflammation in my body is from being on keto. What do I tell him? That you tell him that what he's saying is dumb and you're going to print out some of the research that's in the show notes of all my YouTube videos and take to him and say, here, when you're not busy playing golf, or, you know, sitting at the country club or making your Mercedes payment. Why don't you read some of the latest research on keto? And then maybe you'll stop saying dumb stuff. How about that? Loida. Loida says, can I do keto if I have CKD stage three? That's chronic kidney disease stage three. Loida, 100%. You must do keto ketovore or carnivore, if you want to keep your remaining kidney function, there's no diet that protects kidney function better than a proper human diet. We've actually seen hundreds of people improve their kidney function by eating meat and eggs and a little bit of veg. Yes, 100%. Lori says, I've been carnivore for six months. I feel super fertile. Problem, mm, is, I, problem is I'm 43 and my doctor would be so scared if I got pregnant. What do you think about natural geriatric pregnancy? Technically, I'm geriatric pregnancy because I'm over the age of 35. Um, and really, the risk comes from egg quality and not you specifically, mm -hmm. the mom. So there is a higher risk for abnormalities in the baby. But if you're eating a proper diet, then that risk actually goes down as well. Yep. Uh, so it's up to you. Yep. And I think that you would be an amazing 43-year-old mom. Yep. More and more moms are waiting until later in life, and they're doing really well. Yep. So. Eating carnivore, there is zero chance that you'll develop gestational diabetes. It just won't happen. You are very, very protected from preeclampsia. You're very, very protected from preterm labor, preterm birth, preterm rupture of membranes. Like I could literally just go on and on and on of all the things that your risk of developing is lower because you're eating a proper human diet. Now, 
really the only thing that that being a geriatric pregnancy increases your risk of is chromosomal defects. That's the big thing. Uh, and so if you have uh, the little test, the amniocentesis, and, and, and it shows that. You don't that, even really have to have that. You can do the blood that's, test. There's blood now. Yeah. That's true. I forgot. But if that says that there's no chromosomal abnormality, boom, you've got a healthy baby. Congratulations. Which I'm, you're not probably going to have to worry about that. If you're amniocentesis, I'm saying like. Right, right, right. Unless they see something on the ultrasound, then they would maybe recommend that. <clears throat> Skip says, can I do carnivore if I have prostate cancer? And now, so all you guys listening, can I do carnivore if I have fill in the blank from prostate cancer to no thyroid to no golf? Yes. If you are still a human being, Skip, you can eat a proper human diet and you will benefit from it. Think about it. There's one section of my hair that is just pulling on my head. It's driving me crazy. Finally something that's not my fault. No. It's Guys, you're welcome. We got 2,800 watching. Let's try to bump that up to 3,000. Share this on your MeWe page, on your Facebook page. Share this on any social media that you are that's your favorite. Let's get that number up to 3,000. There are people out there right now suffering with chronic medical diseases that they can reverse with no medication and no copays and no prior approvals and no doctor visits just by eating a proper human diet. Help me help them. Wendy says, my doctor says hormonal Hormonal acne is caused by detox. Also, we said I might get colon cancer because of the lack of fiber intake. No. What causes hormonal acne? I think the answer is in the name. Hormones. Uh, usually yeah. giving up dairy, I know, yep. will help improve that yes. rather quickly. Uh, dairy, pro dairy, specifically. Yep. dairy protein messes with a lot of people's hormone levels and thus they wind up with hormonal acne. Uh, but if you're eating a proper human diet, your hormonal acne is going to get less severe, I promise. Ask this one. And if she strays off of keto and, and starts using the heavy cream and starts... Not even. It's still keto thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still not not clean, whole, for real me. one food. Yeah, yeah. One ingredient. But it's you, just heavy cream. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, man, if I start eating all the keto cakes, I look like a teenager. I can't take it. Uh, Rocky... Carnivore since March 1, losing some weight but developed high pulse. Cardiologist is puzzled and can't find a reason. Any thoughts? Follow up with your cardiologist. They need to continue the investigation until they figure it out. It's definitely not your diet. You're eating a proper human diet, and you are, in fact, a human being. So that's the proper diet for you. Unless you're <clears> eating <throat> a lot of products with some weird additives and some exogenous ketones with extra caffeine and, like, a All lot of joke. energy yep. drinks. And some like nootropics, any of that stuff. Right. If you're eating just real food. Right. Then that right never back. causes heart problems. Alberto says, can you get too much sodium on keto? Alberto, you can get too much sodium on any single diet in the universe. Uh, if you went to the, the county fair salt eating contest and ate way too much salt on purpose, that would be bad for you. But if you salt your food to taste like we recommend on a proper human diet, you're never going to get too much sodium. Good question. Ricky, can carnivore help with transverse myelitis? And can it help with shingle pain that never went away? So like neuropathy that's left so over. So post-herpetic neuralgia and transverse myelitis, it's going to probably decrease the symptoms, but it's not going to it's not going to cure either one of those. Both of those are, are nerve issues, uh, but I could definitely see it decreasing the severity of the symptoms. Hey, Heather W., thank you. Hey, Perry, thank you. S. Beam, first time catching you live. My brother calls Welcome. you. Welcome. All the time. One thing I haven't heard you say yet, along with these diets you recommend, is uh, about physical activity. How important is it to exercise with these diets? It's important <clears> with <throat> any diet. Yeah, yeah. Activity. I want you to be very active. I want you to go outside and play, whatever that means to you, whatever you love to do. I want you to be very physically active. The thing that we differentiate is a lot of the gurus out on the interweb say, if you want to lose weight, you've got to mm. eat less and move more. Like, Exercise is a great method of weight loss. Joining the gym, that, that's a waste of money if your goal is just to lose fat. And also the, when we say active, we mean more like realistic stuff, not chronic cardio where you are on the treadmill for 60 minutes. Like that's not it. No, no. We want you to go outside and play. <laughs> do whatever you love to do. Play football, play soccer, which is also football. Uh, ride your bike, have sex, go swimming, run up the hill. Uh, do cartwheels down the the hill. I don't care. Be very active, but don't join the gym and spend a bunch of money thinking that that will help you lose weight. It will not. 
weightlifting is important, but that's for body composition, not yes. really weight loss. Yes, yes. Um, Nora, thank you so much. Natasha, how do I wean off 20 milligrams of Petsid twice a day? I've been on it for seven years. I've been keto for two and a half. I just started getting very bloated, and I think it is the Pepsid. It could be. Yeah, it could be. So I would go to, I would start taking it every other day and do that for a couple of weeks and then start taking it every third day for a couple of weeks, and then you should be able to stop it with no rebound reflux whatsoever. I need a haircut. Y'all, if you saw my hair before this live came on. Yes, Mr. Vegas, that would also be acceptable. What did Mr. Vegas mm -mm. say? No? Move on. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mike Repair Stuff. Formerly Sarasa's channel. <laughs> Thanks for the co uh, canned cod livers added to my diet. If you guys have not tried cod liver, not cod liver oil, but cod liver, it comes in a tin just like sardines. It is one of the best sources of omega-3 fatty acids and all the vitamins and minerals. Laura also says, I've tried cod liver for the first time tonight. It's so good. I'm so thankful that it's so much better tasting than beef or chicken liver. 100%. It's so much more mild. Wow. Like if you mix it in, I mix it with zero-carb mustard, and you can't even taste it. It's just like it's super thick mustard. You don't know that there's cod liver in there. Yeah. Uh, is a can of sardines a day okay? 100%. Yeah, you need two a day if you want to. You can get cod liver on Amazon. Walmart, I think, has it now. Mm -hmm. Walmart.com mm -hmm. has it. Uh, yep. Whole Foods has it. And let me tell you guys a secret. If your store currently doesn't carry cod liver or any other proper human diet food, every time you go to the store, say, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. And when the manager comes out, say, hey, Will you please get cod liver? I promise you I'll buy three cans a week every week. And I'll tell all my friends, managers will stock the shelves with stuff that they know is going to sell. So if you assure them I'm going to buy it and I'm going to tell my friends to buy it too, they'll stock it. But you got to ask politely. Mm. Scott says, is there a target optimal healthy percentage of body fat that you recommend for men and for women? Yeah, men's body fat needs to be between 10 and 20 percent. Any less than that, any more than that is unhealthy and not ancestrally appropriate. Women's body fat needs to be from 15 to 25 percent. Any less than that and any more than that is not healthy long term for women. If you get much under 15 percent, you're going to lose your period and that's not a good thing. Good question. Uh, frozen green. I had my gallbladder out Friday. I've been keto and intermittent fasting since November. I've lost 50 pounds. I want to carry on. Mm -hmm. I'm taking it easy and slow. Mm -hmm. Heard your videos, but what specific meals do you recommend? Everything hurts. Yeah, everything's going to hurt for a while, uh, especially anything with, with extra fat in it. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to give your hepatic ducts time to take on a storage capacity. Right now, they're just transport. But now that your gallbladder's gone, which stored in concentrated bile, your hepatic ducts are going to have to take on that function. It takes them a few weeks. Give them time. Give them a few weeks, three to six weeks, and then you'll be able to eat keto just like you were before with no problems whatsoever. Bev says, shout out for Granny Berry. Thanks, Bev, for the super chat. And Granny, Granny Berry is 91 years old, and she's eating pretty darn low carb. Not keto, but low carb. And she recently cut out the, the candy because her triglycerides wow. are getting a little bit high. She said she's going to. She said she's going to work on it. Now, you know <laughs> what that means in granny language? Would you guys please say hi to Granny Berry and tell her where you're watching from? She freaking loves that when you guys do that. Stan. Hey, kids, love the advice. Thanks so much, Stan. Thanks, Stan. Rob, I use heavy whipping cream and eight to ten drops of monk fruit in morning coffee. Uh, doesn't cause cravings. Uh, don't do this when fasting. Any reason to not continue? I do carnivore. Nope. You feel fun. As long as you're making progress, keep doing what you're doing. But if you stall, if you start having a problem, then those are two things to look at. Mm -hmm. Marion Lee says, can you give some ideas for prepping for hard times with keto carnivore? Yeah, we can. Um, we have cabinets full of canned butter. Yes, that's a thing. Lasts for eight years. We have cans of cod liver, cans of sardines, cans and jars of anchovies. Tuna fish. Tuna fish, salmon, all the things. Buy any sausages. Yep. And then the other way that we store meat is in the pasture. Okay. We've got chickens. sheep on the hoof. We've got chickens on the claw we've got <laughs> quail in the hutch and per, before long we're going to have three or four uh steers in the and pasture piggies. and we're going to have a few pigs Obviously, running in the woods not everybody can have a farm right uh but don't if, if times are tough and you need food like don't 
be like, well, vineys, listen. Eat your vineys. It's better than macaroni mm. and cheese. Yes. Eat your deviled ham. Eat your deviled. What was that we found the other day? It was deviled liver. Spam even. Yes. Yeah, spam is totally fine. I would much rather you eat those canned meats, even if they're highly processed, than to eat the Doritos and, and the rice the and the and beans the rice, and the beans yeah. and the rice. But and even all the we would eat beans and rice if it came down to that yes. kind of situation. Right? Be beans and rice and wheat are starvation foods. Right. If, if we were starving to death, literally starving, we would 100% eat beans and rice and wheat but and you, feed it to Beckett. But I'll find you a good you know, storage container and just pile it up with canned meat. And meat lasts for years. Tiny sausages are like 60 cents a can. Yes, and they're full of organ meat. I guarantee you. It doesn't say it on the side, but I guarantee you if you snuck into the, the plant where they're making them, they're putting all the cow parts in there. And uh, if you're this, these are budget friendly options, but uh, keto bricks are pretty shelf stable as well. I think carnivore crisp lasts for about a year. You know, there's more expensive things, but listen, if you want to stock up, stock up, go to the potted meat aisle. Yes, potted meat, bologna, spam, hot dogs. The cheapest meat you can buy is a thousand times better for you than the beans and rice and wheat and corn and all the other crap. 100%. Tia, can kombucha give you anything that fatty meat can't? Mm -mm. Maybe some probiotics? Maybe. If it's made the right yeah. way? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But maybe. Yeah. If it's homemade and legit and, and, and as low in sugar as possible, there might be some benefit. Otherwise, if you buy it at the store, 100% no. It ain't helping you at all. Uh, T. Marie, 100%. If you have hypothyroidism, if you have Hashimoto's, if you have hyperthyroidism, or if you have thyroid cancer, you need to be eating keto, ketovore, carnivore. They are on the spectrum of the proper human diet, and they are the diet that every human being on the planet should eat. Thank you, Michelle, for the super chat. Thank you very much. Uh. Uh, Pat Rick, my mother's getting her second knee replacement surgery. Hospital says carb load with insure. What gives? She wasn't told this the first time. I have no idea Do what they gives. think it's a protein shake. Ask them. I want you to ask, call the nurse and say, but if, if I carb load her, isn't that going to raise her blood sugar? And, and, the, and when they say, well, yes. And then you're going to say, well, won't that increase her risk of post-op infection? And then when they go, um, 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 and then, then you'll say, what about spiking your insulin with that? Is that healthy? Um, um, you can um, just skip all that and say, is the reason you want her to drink this so she gets more protein? And if they say yes, just say, okay. And we'll just take give her more, more protein. Yeah. You feed her meat and eggs. She'll get all the protein she needs. Mike, you both are amazing. My folks saw the difference in me, and I was finally able to convince them to change. They both lost 20 pounds. You know how hard it is to convince Asian parents to give up rice? About as hard as it is for me to convince my Puerto Rican family mm -hmm. to give up rice. Mm -hmm. God bless. Back at yep. you, Mike. Congratulations on influencing your family, too. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. Did you already say Michelle? Yeah. Thank you, Arwen, for the super chat. Can um, PhD maybe? help with morning sickness? No. <laughs> I it, wish. <laughs> it might make it less severe. It's impossible to know if Nisha's morning sickness would have been worse if she was yeah, eating don't. Cheetos and Ding Dongs. We don't know. I suspect it makes it less severe, but it's not going to make it go away. I will say, you know, it was shorter, I think, this time. I think it was more severe, but it, was, it seemed short-lived. Uh, the best thing is to talk to your OBGYN or your midwife about taking B6 throughout the day. That seems to really help with morning sickness. Felicia's got a great question. How do I start on keto? Three steps, five steps, really. Number one, remove all sugar from your diet. Definitely the, the added sugar, but also much of the natural sugar. Step two, eliminate all grains from your diet. Wheat, rice, oats, and corn. Step three, eliminate all vegetable oils from your diet. Soybean, canola, sunflower, safflower, all those guys. Vegetable shortening, plant butter. It's not butter. It's vegetable oil, margarine. Remove all that stuff from your diet. Step four, start eating at least half of your plate covered with fatty meat and eggs. Step six, repeat. Maybe step five. What do ketones. you think of prove it ketones? Any exogenous ketones are a waste of money unless you are someone who has a neurological yeah. issue like epilepsy or something like that, that you really have to keep those ketones high. But yep. for us uh, regular people who are just trying to eat healthier, and we have weight. metabolic diseases and autoimmune diseases and stuff like that, then they're kind of a waste of money. They're a waste of money. Put that money into your meat fund. But for the very elderly who cannot or will not eat keto, or for the very young who cannot or will not eat keto, 
exogenous ketones might serve Dementia, a Dementia, ADHD, Asperger's, autism, those kind of things. Yep. They can benefit from ketones for sure. Yep, you got it. That's it. Diabeto, 54 oh. years old, struggled for years as type 2 with metabolic syndrome, found you about six weeks ago on YouTube. Eating full ketovore, I became a patron. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you both for saving my life. I feel great. Welcome. And I, so happy for you. I love it. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, Linda says, Does keto help osteopenia? I've got a video, several videos actually, about how to strengthen your bones on this YouTube channel. As soon as this live's over, go to YouTube and search Dr. Barry Bone. Dr. Barry Osteoporosis, Dr. Barry Osteopenia, and you'll find all those videos. You can watch them, take notes, do the things I say, and you're in a year's time when you repeat your bone density scan, your bones are going to be stronger. And the next time you fall down, you're going to bounce and not break. Lightning round. Okay, okay. let's go. Angie, I've been ketovore one month and down nine pounds, and my <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis pain is 99% better. Thanks for all you do. Bet. Amazing. Love it. Rebecca, my 35-year-old daughter was just diagnosed with MCAS, also allergic to coconut and lactose intolerant. Any recommendations or advice? Yeah, you can avoid all those things, and she can still eat a very nutritious, nutrient-dense, proper human diet. Fasting Chronicles. I work as a firefighter paramedic here in Memphis. Hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Thanks to you, I've solved my gout and pre-diabetes. Gout Maybe. gets better with keto. Got a video about that. Good job, Fasting Chronicles. Woo. Well done. Holy crap. I know. That's why I said lightning it. round. Go to it. Go to Mike, it. Mike, how bad is the sugar in ham or bacon since it's so hard to find anything without it yep. because it's used to be uh, to cure it? As long as a reasonable portion size of the ham or cured meat contains less than one gram of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. I think it's fine. And it's not maple glaze right. kind of bacon. If it's glaze, just, just trim that off and eat the meat underneath. Uh, JR, thank you so much. Karen, thank you so much. You guys are killing it tonight. Steph, I have been on PhD for a month. I literally have no appetite. Do I need to eat daily or should I just continue to fast? If you've got extra fat to lose, Steph, this is your chance. You can fast. Make sure you're getting your water, your salt, your electrolytes. When you're truly hungry, then you're going to eat till you're comfortably Michael, Knoxville, Tennessee. What's up, neighbor? Uh, 20 pounds down since February 10th. Love you guys. Way Beautiful. To go, Michael. Well done, Michael. Now it's time to teach your friends and your family how to eat a proper human diet. That's what PhD stands for. Emma, should I feed my baby starchy veggies and fruit as well as meats and eggs and dairy? She is still breastfed on demand and I'm on keto diet. Emma, I think you messaged me and I was trying to find it and I couldn't find it. Uh, unnecessary for the starchy veg and fruit. Although you can, you know, if your baby likes broccoli and berries, then it's totally fine. Beckett had mostly meat up until he was about two years old. So he started off on scrambled eggs, avocado. Uh, he chewed on rib bone. He chewed on steak. There's lots of videos on my YouTube channel of when he was little. Um, Nisha loves it. Nisha loves it, yeah. Um, he also had liver pate and liver mousse. Oh, he loved liver pate. And and liver he really mousse. liked yeah. it. And then we also exposed him to like peanuts and stuff like that just so he wouldn't develop an allergy. Yep. But I actually made a YouTube video about this very topic today. It's I'm going to post it in probably day after tomorrow. Uh, but it, it's titled why your baby's first solid yeah. food should be red meat. So I'm sure that's going to be a little bit triggering for some people, but it's absolutely true, and it's backed up by the research. Um, also, we transitioned back from breast milk to goat milk when we decided to wean, and he does great on it and absolutely loves his goat milk. My mom accidentally ran out, and he drank cow's milk, and he was not happy about it. Yeah, boink, 800 back when I was still fat on paleo diet is because I was eating all the high-carb Quinoa. I thought it was actually a magic food. He was forcing me to eat it too. Yeah, I made her eat it too. It's like, Debbie, no, it's good. Debbie, Debbie says, I uh, appreciate all that you do. Help us to live healthy. My question is, can carnivore or keto prevent hereditary diseases such as early onset mm. dementia? Yep. So let's talk about hereditary diseases. You've got a genetic predisposition. Your mom had it. Your granddad had it. What percentage chance does that mean that you're going to get it? And most people would be like, I don't know, 50%. Now, some of the autosomal dominant genetic defects, it is. It's 30%, 50%, 75%. But for the vast majority of chronic medical condi conditions that have a genetic predisposition, your increased risk is somewhere between 1% and 5%. You know what's in charge of the other 95% chance of whether you get it or not? Your diet and lifestyle. That's right. Proper human diet. Michelle, my blood sugar sometimes drops to 59 when I delay my breakfast. Mm -hmm. My A1C is 5. 
beautiful. Fasting insulin 5.4. Well done. I don't understand. It's totally fine. A blood sugar of 59 is totally normal after you've converted to a proper human diet, especially in the middle of the night. If any of you guys wear a CGM, Nisha, when she wore her, she would get middle of the night blood sugar readings in the 40s. Felt great, felt fine, no problem. It's completely normal when you're eating a very low carbohydrate diet to have those blood sugar readings. Now, if you feel nauseated, sweaty, like you're going to pass out, that's low blood sugar. You need to take a one bite of a piece of fruit or a tiny teaspoon of honey because honey will jack up your blood sugar. And that will get you back up if you're truly having a hypoglycemic episode. I wouldn't even know. And I checked my ketones. Morgan, one of our daughters, she was really into checking ketones. And she would always check mine and my blood sugar. And it just happened to be like 42. It was in a video. And I was like, holy crap. Like, I would never have known. I didn't have any fine. symptoms. Yeah, fine. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Cynthia, a family member was just diagnosed with myasthenia gravis autoimmune disease. They don't think that has anything to do with his treatment. Would the PhD help him? PhD is going to help his symptoms be less severe, and it's going to help him have fewer flare-ups. As you'll come to realize with MG, the, the medications currently available for it are pitiful. Okay, They'll work great for a few weeks or a few months, and then they'll quit working. You'll have to cycle off and try some other medicines and then come back to those. It's the medications for MG are a circle jerk. There's no good option right now. But if he's eating super low carb, uninflammatory, real human nutrient dense foods, he's going to have fewer flare ups and the flare ups are going to be less severe. And perhaps even help the medication work a little bit better than it presently does. Hey, Web 2000. Welcome. First life. A crushing hypothesis. What an interesting name. Is iron overload a concern on carnivore? Would you advise against it with yeah. uh, hemochromatosis? If, if, if iron overload was caused by eating a meat-heavy diet, human beings as a species would be extinct. Because for the last two and a half million years, we have been super carnivores, which means that 70% of our diet, as uh, uh, discovered with stable isotope analysis, came from meat, fatty meat, big, huge <laughs> megafauna. So it makes no sense to say that eating red meat will cause iron overload. It doesn't make any ancestral or physiological sense. I know your doctor said that. I'm not yelling at you, but I would like for you to ask your doctor, so why does red meat now cause this problem when for the last two and a half million years, it didn't cause this problem. Ask your doctor that. Lisa, um, help. I have bad hair loss below GERD and muscle wasting for two years and hypothy and have low estrogen food intolerant intolerances. Keep me limited on keto food choices. And ideas. so if you took the food uh, sensitivity testing and that's what you're going by for the food intolerances, you can forget all that. Okay. There is no human being on the planet who is intolerant to meat and eggs. Okay. We're, if you can't eat meat and eggs, then you're going to die. So yes, you can eat all the stuff I talk about on my YouTube videos. You can have an egg allergy. Yeah. You might have an egg white allergy, but, but there's still thousands of other keto, ketovore and carnivore choices. Don't feel like, and if you did the food sensitivity testing, you can throw that in the garbage. It's worthless. It does not help you at all to, to make decisions about what you should and should not eat. What you're probably sensitive to is dairy and carbohydrates and soy and <clears throat> grains and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, some people who have intolerances or egg sensitivities, mm -hmm. once they you actually eat uh, mm -hmm. pastured fresh eggs mm -hmm. from or duck uh, eggs or, quail or eggs. duck eggs or quail eggs, they find that they can tolerate those 100%. actually pretty well, or just the yolks of eggs. Richie B says, "What about beer?" Oh, Richie B. Richie B. No, there's a zero carb one now. Yeah, beers for college kids who are trying to develop so a beer judgy. gut. Okay, grow up and drink what human beings are but supposed to drink. There's a zero carb one now. Yeah, there's also zero carb crack and meth. Doesn't mean you should in, in, indulge. Drink water, unsweetened tea, black coffee. I tell that's you, what Topo Chico is a pretty good substitute for beer. It 100%, gives you, yeah. It's a, in a glass bowl, yep, nice and yep, cold, yep. got that fizzy bite to it. Yep, Give it a yep. try. And you can put a little splash of your local IPA in your sparkling water to give it that beer aroma. Yeah, beers for kids. I used to no, drink. I used to drink beer when I was a teenager. Then I grew up. Am I triggering anybody? You're triggering me, judgy. <laughs> yeah. 
Ken wants to know, I am a type 2 diabetic. My A1C is 5.0 for the last two years, mostly. I have high fasting glucose numbers. When I wake up, my doctor says he wasn't worried about that. I'm not worried about that either. If your A1C is fine, is five, then it's fine. Beautiful. Well done. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, We already did that. We did that one, yeah. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you very much. Jerry. Okay. We did that one, too. Okay, cool. Um, announcements. You got some? Uh, yes. Let's see. Um, as soon as this live is over, I made a YouTube video today about medications that will raise your triglycerides. There's a list. And as soon as this video is over, I'd say within the hour, I'm going to post that on this YouTube channel. So if you still have high triglycerides, even though you're low carb keto, uh, you need to watch that. You're probably taking a prescription medication that's raising your triglycerides. And then uh, what else is going on? Uh, did anybody give us any baby names for baby, Who wants baby a bump girl? Date. Yeah, let's have a bump date. This dress is perfect for that. Stand up and show us what you've got. OMG, look at that. We've had a lot of barbecue today. I'm fixing to have some more. You are going to have some more? Yeah, you better save I'm some. starving. Thank you, Francis, for the super chat. Uh, the Keto Awards are now. Weeks open for nominations. I put a link down in the show notes so that you can vote for your, your top keto educator, your top keto book, keto podcast, keto researcher, uh, and make, make your vote count. If somebody has helped change your life, then vote for them in the keto awards. Link in the bio. Due July 21st ish. She all, is beautiful. Isn't she? We all know babies don't come on their due date. I can't believe you married me. That's I can't either. Crazy. <laughs> crazy Fast times 95. 120 days in ketovore, A1C 5.2 from 8.5. Uh, gallbladder pain, kidney feels burning when I'm eating. Frequently urinating, no stones. GFR is 60 was the cause. Yeah. And what can I, what can help? Can it be that I'm eating too much salt? You've either got cystitis or a bladder infection. You need to go see your doctor, get a urinalysis. And also have your doctor send the urine sample off for a culture. Okay. It's very common. Doctors these days, they just check the urine dipstick. And if it doesn't say anything, they're like, I don't know what's wrong with you. But it's very, very often it's, it's cystitis, which is inflammation of the bladder from a food you're eating. Or it could be from a medication, or you have an undiagnosed bladder or uh, ureter infection. Cute bump, Brittany, Misha. Brittany, thank you. Um, what were you saying about ketones and brains? Uh, had a car accident last May and have PCS, lots of headaches. I see a neuropath- um, neurologist and cognitive therapy. They say I need carbs for brain function. Is this no, true? I'm on. Gabapentin and yeah. bar. Your liver, through a process called gluconeogenesis, makes as much glucose as your brain and all the other body parts need. It can also break down glycogen at a second's notice and give you glucose if you need that. You don't have to eat any glucose or carbs or sugar whatsoever for proper brain function. Now, in your case, while you're healing from this, you would be a candidate that I would say, why don't you try some Prove It uh, exogenous ketones? They're pricey. But if it helped your brain heal faster there's and work better, uh, they're all pricey. I know, I'm just saying there's but, other brands yeah, that may be brands. better. Yes, yes. Actually, I think Prove It's a fairly decent well, brand. Well, salts. Yeah, the, es- the, the ketone esters. That's the best one. Right. They taste um, worse, though. Human, HVMN. They make a ketone ester. It tastes like butthole. Yeah, it tastes awful. But they're really high-quality ketones. And for, something, for somebody like you, you might benefit from yeah. that. Yeah. Corey says, I'm sure you've been asked this. Uh, is there a worry about kidney stones if you're doing the carnivore diet? No, I have a video about kidney stones and what actually causes them on this YouTube channel. Check it out as soon as this video is over. And you may even want to send a link to your doctor who still believes that eating lots of meat causes kidney stones because that's dumb. It doesn't. Thank you again, Miss Francis. How about Brianna mm. for baby girl Barry? Uh, Kendra Nicole. We're not Ellie going K- with Ken anything. Ella K. I think Kendall. You don't like that? No. Dolph says, um, I fast every third day for 36 hours, and every time I get explosive diarrhea, is this okay? Some people do this. I don't think it's dangerous at all, but but some people do this. Then Now, you're not going to do this for the rest of your life. Your body, your gut, your colon is going to get used to this fasting, and it'll stop doing that. Hey, look, Rianni Berry. Look, it's spelled like granddaddy's. Oh, right, like Rainy. Yeah. My grandfather's name was Rainy. 
uh, Northern Sportsman says, I have bad IBS. I can't eat anything with ma without mass cramping and pain. What can I do? This all happened after I got salmonella. Northern Sportsman, you need to be 100%. The next 90 days, eat all the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs you can hold. and Don't eat anything else. Drink water. Use salt. Use pepper unless that flares your gut up. And after those 90 days, get back with me and tell me how much happier your gut is. Mayberry. I like Mayberry. Maybelline berry. Maybelline. That's cute. Phyla berry. Bonnie berry. I like that. Braise. Like, like you braise the ribs. Braise berry. Scarlet rose. <sighs> mm. I like blue rose. <clears throat> Kinley. Kennedy. Yes, Kennedy berry. That's it. That's her name. That's, what's, that's what her name's going to be. How about ketone berry? Never mind. Isabella. I like I that. like dingle. Alexandria, I like that. Dingle, that's disrespectful. That's funny. That's funny, James. Thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Lock. No, Giants has been keto since 2020. A1C was 5.5, and now Ketovore A1C is up to 6.3. C-peptide is 3.16. Could artificial sweeteners be causing this? Maybe. Maybe you need to be keto. Maybe keto. Ketovore is the diet for you. She is keto. No, I think she's keto more. Oh, okay. You but you were keto and it was fine. You may need to go back to keto. I think I think some people do better with 20 or 30, 30 total grams of uh, real food carbs a day. I think some people do better. Some people do better with zero carbs. So play around. Go back to keto for a few months and see if you're able to see improve. It's Paola's birthday. Oh yeah, I forgot. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Paola. Paola. Everybody sing to Paola. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Kacha. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Kaching. Happy birthday, dear Paola. We love you. Happy birthday to you. You were flat. <laughs> we love you and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for being one of our moderators for yes. the last Feels like forever. a million years. Forever. Yeah, forever. <laughs> Pal was a, she's the bomb diggity. All right, guys. Uh, anything Kevin else? says he has t shirts older than Paola. So, yeah, she's, yeah. Hey, Roxana. She's a young chicken. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, what else is going on here? Schnozberry. Come on, Joe. It's a Schnozberry. Get it? Get it? Yeah, I get it. Do you get Keisha. it? Nisha with a K. Ooh, oh, yeah. That was a good that one. Felt good. All right. Elias, last question. Began carnivore two years ago and no more gout. Pre-diabetes and lost 90 pounds. Yep. Gout goes away on a proper human diet. Pre-diabetes always goes away on a proper human diet. And if you got lots of extra stored fat, it goes away with the proper human diet. Good really job, Elias. Nice. Cherry berry. I really like cherry berry. I would cherry red berry. Thank you, Francis. Hey, thank you. Angelia <laughs> lost five pounds in seven days. Wow. Excellent. That's not typical. <laughs> uh, results typical. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Kenesha, Kenesha. Oh, Kenesha. Get it? Kenesha. I've had a lot of people send me that I one. I like that. That's that's interesting. Elona. Jolene, Jolene. Yeah. Dolly, good. I've had a lot of people say Dolly. Dolly Parton Berry. How appropriate. If I thought it would get her to, to notice me, I would totally do it. Dolly I Parton would do it. Berry. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. We yes. will be back next week. Same place, same time. If you didn't get your question answered tonight, we tried. But you can become a patron on Patreon.com. There's a link down in the show notes. And we have four extra live Q&As in there every single week. And instead of 3,118 people asking questions, we've got one or 200 asking questions. So we can answer more questions and answer them in deeper detail. Also, come hang out with me on my channel. Nisha loves it. Nisha loves it. If you want to see it. what we eat in a day and or, you know, lots of other things. We just, I do my favorite recipes over there too. Uh, yeah. She keeps pregnancy uh, keto. Right. She's got plans to do what Dr. Barry eats in a day, but every time she plans on doing it, I don't break my fast until what, like five or six p.m. She's like, "Well, it won't. It'll be a two-minute video because you're going to yeah. scarf it down and be done." Well, you know, 
what you'd really see is how much coffee this man drinks on the day. I drink some coffee. <laughs> I love my coffee. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much to our patrons. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central inside our private protected Patreon community with our keto carnivore PhD tribe. See you then. See ya. Bye. Hey, I clicked it. What happened? <laughs>